This next section is going to be about testing interoperability and conformance for MIPI implementations. And really what we're going to talk about is some of the resources that are available to MIPI members to support your testing, uh, testing activities within MIPI, to give you kind of an overview of that. So, uh, so the agenda, current policies regarding testing within MIPI, and also the test investigation group, what's their role, what are they doing. And then we'll go into conformance testing and interoperability testing. And each of those items has a little bit of a sub-agenda uh, to get into a little more detail for those. But those are kind of the three main topics that we're going to talk about uh, this afternoon. So first off, the testing policy that MIPI Alliance has adopted is that members have the freedom to create test tools, sell test tools, create services, and sell services. But MIPI doesn't place really any hard and fast rules on those things in terms of approving certain tools, mandating that you use certain tools, or requiring people to do testing. There's actually quite a bit of uh, freedom there. And uh, because of that, there's no kind of a certification or logo or, or compliance program. That's a question that uh, we tend to get a lot is, well, what do I need to do to get MIPI certification or MIPI compliance? And the short answer is that MIPI isn't doing those kinds of things. And there's a couple of reasons that uh, we don't. Uh, first, the variety of MIPI implementations, the number of ways that, even if you think of a D5 or M5, it's just a 5, but it can be implemented in such a number of different ways. From our perspective right now, it's not really practical to summarize all of that functionality into one a little logo or certification. If you did want to look at the formal uh, MIPI testing policy, I've provided the link here. It's also linked to from the front page of the MIPI testing resources page, if you did want to read that in more detail. But, but basically the idea is that there's a great deal of freedom uh, in offering test tools and services, and then also you as members using them. Now even though there's not a formal certification program, it doesn't mean that MIPI is ignoring tests. In fact, we have a group that's dedicated to examining issues around tests, the test investigation group, uh, someday in the future, this will probably be a permanent uh, working group. And really, the point of the test investigation group is to be kind of a hub of testing activity uh, within MIPI. So people can go there to ask questions about tests related to standards. Uh, people can go there for questions on uh, conformance test suite documents. Uh, so, and then also a test investigation group is trying to work with each of the individual MIPI working groups to raise awareness of tests, to make sure that within each specification there's appropriate hooks and test modes so that when people are actually implementing these, these devices, it's easier to test them because they have uh, modes dedicated to testing. And just very quickly on the acronyms you see here, CTS, Conformance Test Suite, it's a document that describes the testing in terms of the specification. It doesn't specify a particular model or test tool that you should use. It just provides you uh, an algorithm for how to do the test in the language of the specification. Now the next one, MLI, is method of implementation. This one's very different. Based on the tests that are defined in the CTS, the MLI tells you how to perform those tests with a specific model of hardware. So the CTS is something that would be produced from within MIPI. The MLI typically is going to be something that a test tool provider is going to produce. So if you think of um, test and measurement companies, you think of Tektronix, you think of Agilent, they would be interested in creating an MLI to show you how exactly to use their products in order to perform a particular CTS. So that's an important distinction to make between the purpose of the CTS and the purpose of an MLI. Because we have enough acronyms already in MIPI. Uh, just very quickly, uh, the mission and objectives of the test investigation group. I got this, got into this a little earlier, but uh, provide a forum for people to talk about uh, test issues, uh, track the test efforts, the things that different working groups are doing uh, to enable testing. Uh, maintain ties with test tool providers um, and also the work groups to make sure that the specifications are written and created in such a way that you can use existing and available test tools to do the testing of these new interfaces. Um, encourage people to do testing of their MIPI products and work with the marketing work group to make that happen. 
And we also try and look at the testing of an entire interface, the whole system. So if you think of, for example, maybe a CSI2 sensor, it's a phi, and then above that there's a CSI2 protocol. And you may have a CTS that defines how to test the protocol and how to test the phi. But are those CTSs designed such that when you're performing them, you're really testing that whole entire interface, the whole system? So that's some of the things that we, we look for um, in CTSs when we're uh, reviewing them. And if you're interested in following along more or being more involved, we do do weekly conference calls, uh, Mondays, 11 a.m. Eastern. If you want to call and see what's happening in the test investigation group. Another thing that we're doing, or kind of overhauling right now, is the MIPI members test resources page. Right now, if you log into uh, your MIPI Alliance account, and you, if you're familiar with the page, there's all the different work groups that are listed. And then far over on the right, there's a link to the MIPI testing resources page. Uh, right now, the test investigation group is working on uh, overhauling this page, making it a little bit easier to use. But this is where you're going to go to find any uh, conformance test suites, any MOIs. Uh, there is uh, some software that you can download to perform some DeFi testing. That's all available on the test resources page. And that page is important to recognize that it's available to all adopters. The work group pages um, for the individual work groups are restricted to contributors. But this testing resources page is something that any MIPI adopter can go, download these documents, uh, download the software to use, and so forth. So that's a nice resource to keep in mind. And the test investigation group is the one that's uh, maintaining and overseeing that. Uh, before I move on, any questions about MIPI testing policy or the test investigation group, what their purpose is? All right, I'm going to go ahead and talk about conformance testing. And for this one, we've got a little bit of a sub agenda here under conformance testing. Uh, we're going to talk about documentation. I'm going to get a little bit more into the documents that I referred to earlier. Connectivity. What are some recommended best practices for when you put your devices together so they can be tested? Uh, test modes and test enablement. What does uh, your device have to be able to do so that it can be easily tested? And then a uh, process for doing that. So first, the primary test documentation that we produce with the MIPI. First is the specification and the PICS. Now the PICS is a protocol implementation conformance statement. Sometimes it's the inside the spec, sometimes it's outside the spec, but really that's kind of the very first item that we're going to look to when we talk about document, documenting conformance testing. The next is the conformance test suite and then the method of implementation. And you can see that each one kind of builds on the previous one. We'll get into that in the next slides here. So the specification and the PICS, which is either inside the specification as an individual section within the specification, or sometimes it's a standalone document, that's written by the work group. Now if you look back at some of the older MIPI specifications, they don't always have PICS, but this is a new idea, and at least in terms of MIPI. And you're going to notice that a lot of the newer specs coming out will actually have a PICS either in the document or as a standalone. And essentially the purpose of that PICS is to highlight the requirements of the specification. And it's really like, it's almost like a checklist of all the requirements that a particular specification has. So that's one document uh, to look for uh, when you're looking for conformance testing documents. Now the next one is the conformance test suite. Now this is based heavily on the PICS. All those requirements that are that are in the PICS, the conformance test suite takes those, and then we have to answer the question, well, how do we actually test this requirement? How do we actually perform this test? And so the conformance test suite is where you'll look to see a procedure on how to test for each of those requirements. What do we need to do to this particular interface to observe whether or not it's meeting these requirements or not? And that's what the conformance test suite tries uh, to establish for us. So it defines a procedure and an observable result for each procedure that you're going to uh, perform. It doesn't address performance because that's out of the scope of the MIPI interface spec. Right now, if you were to go to the testing resource page, you'd see uh, CTS is available for these uh, specifications that are listed here. CSI, DSI, both the D5 and M5, and the Pro and Slim bus have all created uh, conformance test specifications. 
The goal, ultimately, is to have a conformance test specifications for all of the MIPI specs. Now, that's a, a lofty goal because there's a lot of uh, MIPI specs. But the idea is we want to have testing coverage for all of the specifications that MIPI produces. And these are the ones that we've covered to date. Next is the method of implementation. This one's not written by the work group. It's written by a test tool company or someone that has a vested interest in showing you step by step how to perform a particular test. You might think of the MOI almost like a recipe or a cookbook. It shows you exactly how to connect things together, exactly what buttons to push on the tools in order to make that test happen. And we'd like to link to these MOIs from the testing resources page so that you can find all of that uh, information in one place. Now, the MOI isn't as defined as new tests, keep in mind. It's just referencing back to the conformance test suite. It's showing you how to implement those tests with a particular tool, a particular model of tool. So now you can see how each of those documents builds on the other. The PICS is drawn from the specification. The CTS is based on the PICS. The MOI is based on the conformance test suite. Any questions on uh, documentation before I move on? Next item is connectivity. Uh, MIPI doesn't define connectors. It's meant to be connecting interfaces inside a phone. There's not a standard connector in the way that a lot of other technologies have. So that can make testing things difficult. There's not a standard connector. If you think of other high-speed technologies, think of HDMI, and DisplayPort, SATA, PCI Express, they all have a connector. And so in order to test that, people will create a test fixture that adapts from that connector to something that can be connected to test equipment. That's not an option in MIPI because there is not any formally defined connector or external connector. But we have made some recommendations to people for best practices when they're designing and building evaluation boards or what they should look for to make their product uh, easier to test. And so right now we've done this with recommendations for DeFi-based products, cameras and displays, but we've done this for BIF. We're still working on doing it for M5. It's actually one of the things that we're trying to sort out this week is what's going to be the best way to connect uh, M5 devices together and to, te to test equipment. Um, and the reason it's a little bit up in the air is based on the different requirements of the protocol that's going over M5, whether it's like a CSI3 over Unipro, something else over Unipro, or LLI. So that's uh, still to be determined. but. Uh, Certainly, at some point, we're going to have uh, some best practices recommendations about uh, connectivity for M5 based products. So, I'll just go back and talk about connectivity for DeFi. For DeFi, essentially, what we've recommended to people is to use an SMA connection uh, for their products, whether it be a host side or a peripheral side, like a camera or a display. And on the peripheral side, we've recommended people to make a test vehicle board. So essentially to take whatever their product is, for example, if it's a sensor, that's the case that's illustrated on the left, they would take their sensor and mount it on this board right in the middle, and then perform whatever kind of routing they need out to these uh, SMA connectors. On the display side, it's the same idea here. This would be whatever kind of, uh, what do they call it, low insertion force connector that you might use for FPC on the display. That would be here. And then that's routed to some SMA connectors. And then you'd actually connect the display to it up here. And we provided some references if you needed to provide any other GPIO pins or power to the display. All of that's covered in, um, in this. Now these are just references of the people to use. Um, but speaking from experience, um, a lot of people have been able to implement a test vehicle board for their product bring it to an interop event and not have any kind of trouble with connectivity. Bring it to a lab for testing and not have any kind of trouble connecting it to test equipment. So we found that this, uh, this method has been very useful 